as a software developer, you'll spend a good chunk of your time debugging code and fixing errors ranging from silly mistakes to flaws in your design of your application. These can get annoying as you code, but they're great learning opportunities and offer a lot of good insight on what not to do going forward. But where or how do you get started? Hi, I'm Victor, and today on Height Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at how to debug code with three simple steps. I'll be using C Sharp and Visual Studio for this video, but the principles should be helpful in other programming languages as well. Okay, here I am in Visual Studio, and I have this little code snippet that I'm going to explain to you what it does. So basically, the class is called Vowel Counter, and the method is called Vowels. So what this does it is it takes a word and returns the number of vowels inside that word. So the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Let's look at an example over here in the main method. I have Pikachu, which should give me three vowels because there's an I, there's an A, and there's a U. So if you run the application, it will say number, number of vowels in word, which should be the word we pass, and the number of vowels. Yeah, I'll explain to you that in a second. But let's just run the application and see Control F5. Number of vowels is three. As you can see over here, three. Maybe we can try this again with another word like water, melon. Watermelon has one A, E, E, and O. So that should give me four. I run the application. See up here, watermelon, four. Good. So that's all working fine. So what we're doing here is, first of all, in vowels, we are setting a new list of characters and we're setting the vowels here. Again, this is just some simple Im implementation. There's probably some other ways to do this as well and easier and better. And I will show you a simpler way to do it later on. But for now, just walk, just walk with me through this. So I've set all the vowels inside this list, A, I, O, U. And I have a counter here that starts at zero, which will give me the number of vowels. Good. So now what I do is I loop through the, the letters in this list here, this vowels list. And for each, then again, I loop into the word that you pass. Yeah, like let's say watermelon. And for each character in word, let's say we're in W. If that letter is equal to the letter that we're looping through here, number of vowels should increase right here. So let's say we're at A, we're checking it. Is A equal to A? I mean, we're at W. Is W equal to A? Is it equal to E, I, O, or U? If so, this piece of code executes, number of vowels increases, and then we go to the next letter. But it's in, if it's not, nothing happens. This is false, and this piece of code does not execute. So in our case, W, false, this doesn't execute. A, true that a is equals to a letter here number of vowels increases and this goes on until the end then we get the grand total which is here number of vowels which will be increased and then we display that here good now to the main focus of this video there's a bug in this code this piece of code over here and i will show you what that bug is we can look at this word right here and we'll get all the vowels, but what if, let's go back to the Pikachu example, I do it in all caps. What do you expect to happen? Well, this should technically give me three. When I run the application, it's saying zero. So there's a bug, there's a problem here that we need to fix. Because it should be working regardless of whether this is lowercase or it's uppercase. Now, this bring us to the, brings us to the three steps I can help you debug code and the very simple steps. Obviously, as code gets more complex, you'll have to do a little more debugging, but these should give you a strong foundation to build up on when debugging code, especially as a beginner. So these steps are where, what, and how. Where is the problem? What caused the problem? And how do I fix it? So let's look at the first step. Where is the problem? So we know that we have these vowels here. A, I, O, U, and they're in this. There, those vowels are present in this word somewhere. 
So we know that in our code, we're supposed to be checking A, I, O, U with the letters in each word. So that should be where the problem is because A is being checked to A here, but that's not working correctly. Now we need to look at the next step, which is the what. What is causing it? As you can see here, this is lowercase and this is uppercase and this A. So what we're doing is we're comparing lowercase vowels to uppercase vowels. So that's the issue. That's what's causing the issue. That means there's no lowercase A in here. There's no lowercase E in Pikachu or U or any other vowels. So it's always going to reach on zero as long as all the words here or the letters here are in uppercase. Now we go to the third step. How do we fix it? Let's look at the simplest way, the, simple way, the simplest way I think or I came up with that we can fix this. And that is either all these will be need to be converted to uppercase when comparing this or an easier way is to convert this to lowercase every time. That way we're always comparing lowercase letters here to lowercase letters here. Why don't we try that instead? Let's see how to do that, how to do that in C sharp. C sharp has this useful method called to lower. You can use on strings, which lowers, lowers the case of all the letters. That means Pikachu will be lower to lowercase p, lowercase i, k, a, c, h, u. And that, in essence, should give us the usual three that we have. So if I run the application, it gives me the three like before. And again, we can try this with another one like water, melon, which should give me four. Good. Obviously, a better way to do all this is to always maybe have unit tests to make sure that this, it catches this error. But if you're a beginner, then that's a whole topic for another video that you, you'd need to read up on and cover. But for the sake of this video, we're looking at the watch, the three, sim the three simple steps, the simplest way to get started. Where, what, and how. Now let's look at a more complex example or slightly more complex or an, an example that you might encounter in real life. Let's say you have a field, public, for the sake of this video, we're going to make it static. And this is also a list of characters and maybe let's call it reference vowels. Let's say that you wanted to, you wanted to use this field to compare the vowels instead of creating a variable here, you already have a field present here. So let me comment this out, control K and control C. Then we check for the vowel in reference vowels. Now, what do you think should happen? This is going to give us an exception that you'll see a lot in real life. And that is the world famous null reference exception. But the good thing about exceptions is it gives you what's called a stack trace. This entire thing is called a stack, is called a stack, stack. <laughs> Is called a stack trace and it gives you a rundown of how the code was executed and where the errors happened so let's look at the first one it says if you look at the end of it it says cs line 22 program.cs line 22 let's go to program.cs line 22 that's where the first error is and the second one is at line 41 41 that is where the second well, not second error, but the problem started here. And then this is another area where we tried to continue execution, but then we couldn't go, go ahead because there's a, a problem in the code. All right. For this one, we'll have to use a debugger just so we can see what's going on. So in order to use a debugger, put a breakpoint at the beginning of the method. So you put a breakpoint here with F9 run the debugger with F5. And this opens a window where you can look at, watch the variables. It's even called the watch windows. You can study the variables. As you can see, word here, it's watermelon, that's the same one here. And when you press F10, we're mimicking what it's like when the code is actually executed. So if I press F10, code goes to execution, goes to the second line. And languages like C Sharp and JavaScript execution, execution goes line by line downwards so everything seems fine so far if i execute again with f10 
everything seems fine we're at the for each block and now we're at the reference vowels if i f execute again system now a reference exception we know what caused it reference vowels and you know where it's happening over here as you can see but how do you fix it first we need to know that why a, ref a null reference exception happens in c sharp lists are by default set to null when they're not initialized so here it looks like we forgot to initialize reference vowels and so it's null that's why we're getting a null reference exception so how do we fix this let me cl close the debugger with shift and f5 one thing we can do because we forgot to initialize it we can set initialize it right here and set it equal to this piece of code right here let me copy that and paste and that way it's initialized so that we know over here we are looping through a list that is initialized and if i try to run the application now it works number of watermelon is four an alternative way is to initialize the, the list right here maybe say reference vowels is equals to this and remove it from here oops control f5 and it works so either or it works better i mean either way works so it's really up to you remember again where was the problem here what caused it it's null how do we fix it we initialize the list three simple the three simple steps to getting started with debugging all right i think that's all i had but before i wind up um this video is getting a bit long but let me wind up by showing you a simpler way as promised of implementing this entire thing so let's return this back to whoops vowels vowels and i can remove this remove this breakpoint with f9 and then here i can iterate over vowels so in c sharp there's this thing called link extension methods where i can literally light, write all of this in one line and i can show you that so i can here's the result and again word count count is a link extension method that gives you the number of elements in that array or collection so a string is basically a collection of characters so we can iterate over it and then for each element we'll call it x if vowels contains that element we'll return the count of the number of vowels in that element and again i need to do two lower here two lower that way I even i get the i get the number of it doesn't that way it doesn't matter whether it's a lowercase or uppercase then here i can do something like this result whoops like that that just so we can see them side by side and if i run the application result is four number of vowels and watermelon is four i can maybe do this so you can see them together but it's doing the exactly the same thing result this line of code is doing the same thing as these right here i can even remove them and remove this and leave that and look it's much shorter it's much cleaner and if i run the application result is four that's the number of vowels regardless of whether it's uppercase lowercase pikachu same thing three and that's it i hope this video was helpful to you guys let me know if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and just give me your feedback or anything you didn't understand i can try and maybe help you out remember to like the video if you liked it remember to subscribe it really really helps out if you like the video and share it with your friends and if you want to talk more you join the discord and follow me on twitter you can also follow me on twitch at height above sea level we can talk more and have some more live coding sessions like this that's all out for you guys thank you so much for watching and as always from me to you deuces